called. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at creating a menu system with Game Creator and the State Machine module. It took me a minute to figure this one out, but after I put it together I realized how straightforward it actually is and I streamlined it as best I can using a few simple actions and triggers from the hub. So basically all you will need is uh, how we typically start. We need a game object with the state machine where the state machine will live. For my menu, I have three menu items. So I have a combat, I have traversal, and I have close. I also have on select. With on select, that basically lets the state machine know that you have a particular button selected and we can use the bools, which is represented here with the empty boxes. We can use the bools to drive the state machine conditions. Okay, before we get started, we have to do a bit of housekeeping. In the input manager, we'll have to set up and make sure that we have access to our joystick. Right now, I'm using the PlayStation controller. So what you want to do is go to edit product set, uh, settings. And in here, you have to, in your input manager, you just have to make sure that you have a horizontal entry set up for your joystick. And you can see the, end, uh, the settings here and the vertical as well. Okay. Once you have those set up, uh, I don't think you necessarily have to set up your fire buttons. Basically, Unity knows well, uh, well, Game Creator has pretty much those set up in the, in the input manager. Um, on key down, you have access to all the buttons. And you basically just have to set them up based on what Unity considers for the mapping for whatever controller you're going to be using, if it's Xbox or PlayStation. Unity has specific button mapping for those particular controllers and axes and, and certain things like that. You also want to make sure that you go to the Game Creator Hub, hub.gamecreator.io. You want to make sure you go here and type in select. And these two actions here, you, these are the ones that you will need, is select UI and the deselect UI. And most important here is the igniters or triggers uh, on select UI, on deselect UI. And these are created by Mad Stuntman. Awesome dev, by the way, you can find him on Discord. And these are the drivers for what we will be doing with the menus. Okay, so let's take a look at the buttons themselves and what triggers you need on these buttons. On the buttons, what I have basically is two triggers. So on select UI or on the select UI. These triggers are actually found on the hub and the link is in the description. Uh, created by Mad Stuntman. You can find him on the Discord server, the game created Discord server. He's an awesome dev and he helped me a lot with a few of these actions and triggers. So you'll need the on select UI. So every time you select a menu item, the button, every time you select that item, an action will happen. These actions here, or when you deselect, these actions here will happen. So let's take a look at these. On select, so every time I select, say the close button, on select, I created an action here that I'll be using. So I created the trigger first, and then um, the plus sign, to create an empty action and then from here I created the action and dragged it into here like that. Okay, I don't need two, so I'll just delete that one. Okay, so in these actions, um, what you have to do is assign a bool that will communicate with the state machine. So the local variable, the bool that I have selected here is the menu manager. So the menu manager is the one where the state machine is on, so it's referencing itself basically, right? So every time you select the UI, this action will fire. So it assigns a bool, flips it to true, close selected, letting the game state machine know that the close has been selected indeed. And I also create a global um, bool letting, letting the state machine know itself as well that on select has happened. So basically what I'm trying to do here is, it's not enough to have the bool selected or close, uh, like say for each button, if you just have the close selected or the traversal selected or the combat selected, what will happen is that everything will fire at the same time because all the conditions pretty much will be true at that point, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we, ha we add an additional bool here uh, on select. So basically if these two match up, then it can fire. If uh, on select and traversal match up, then it can fire and, and on and on, right? Okay, so once we're done, on deselect, so when we're deselected, we want to flip that bool back to false, the close selected in this case. Okay, so now the buttons are good to go. They're referencing the state machine that they're on and they're communicating um, in and out of the state machine. Once this is all set up, let's take a look at the state machine itself. 
and the blackboard as we go we always go back to the blackboard we want to make sure those bools are set up so i have the on select so let's actually take a look at what i have here the orange lines here means that a condition has been set in here i'm going to have a, a trigger set up this trigger is an on variable change basically every time the on select has been triggered this is why i set it here this is why i set it to toggle because if i just assign the value i don't believe that will work because you assign it once and that's it right it will be always be true so we want to toggle it we want to toggle it false we want to toggle it true just so that this trigger fires every single time okay so from here i i have a bridge basically you don't need this but um you can all you can pretty much do from unselect and then you can set uh selective from here and then you can uh, do your conditions that way but i like having a hub empty action here just because right so just to keep it nice and clean i set the transition mode to selective from parallel so i don't want them fired all at the same time so i set it to selective so this is your if else okay so i have my close i have my combat and i have my traversal these are these three right here let's take a look at this condition okay so when i select the close button i want to check and make sure that that bool that we set is true if it is true it's going to continue on and play the hover sound button okay and same is true for these ones as well so if the traversal is selected it goes here and come back or vice versa so because i know my combat will be the top most menu item i want to select that automatically and i want to set the bool automatically for that one in my start action here which is orange this is one that fires immediately as soon as the state machine is is activated I want to make sure that my combat selected bool is set to true because that's always true, right? Okay, so once we know where we're going, once state machine knows where we're going, which one we have selected. So say we have the combat selected. So in my case, I'm on a PlayStation controller using the DualShock. So I, that's X for me, which is joystick button one, okay? So when I press that button, now it does a second check here. So where you see these, you have three different arrows here you're probably wondering why there's three different arrows right because i'm using a toggle on select so if i go here because i'm using a toggle on select at any given moment it could be true or false so if i just use one condition to check and see if it's true then it's not going to work if it's false and vice versa right so to avoid that what we do in that scenario is uh we set two conditions so we set one for false and one for true, which creates the triple arrow here. Okay. So here in this condition, the topmost one here, which is start sim, what we what we do, we compare that the, the bool we set here, the combat is true, is selected, which it is. And then we also check to see if on select is true, right? So if those two conditions are met, it goes into the start of whatever you want happen. Okay. Now, for the second part, which is this one here, we, we have to set the on select to fault. So now it's checking to see if, if the on select is on or if it's on select is off and we cover our bases because of that toggle action. Okay, so now that's set up, let's take a quick look and see how it runs. Uh, if you look over here, you can see that the combat that we set up, the combat bool that we set up is set to true here and everything else is false, right? So let's take a, a look and see how everything goes. All right. So we have the menu pop up. The first thing you will notice is that this flip, the on select flips to true, which is what we want. And the combat is still selected true. So when we cycle through it, traversal, everything works accordingly to plan, right? So you see, you have situations here uh, where you have the faults, right? And then you'll have the true here on the same button. That's why we set up the conditions here to capture both states in any event that happens, right? Okay, so when you say, say for instance now, when I click the close, it goes there and plays the close. I go back into the menu and hit the combat. There you go. And there you have it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if I miss anything at all, or if uh, something I glossed over, do let me know in the comments or on the Discord server. All the information is in the description for the triggers in this video and any items that are used in this video. And that's it. Until next video, stay safe 
and happy game creating. Thank you.